Indian citizen Nikhil Gupta has been arrested by United States authorities over links with a plot to kill a Sikh separatist leader Gurpatwant Singh Pannu in United States. Another case of such kind involves the death of Hardeep Singh Nijar, a Canadian citizen and the claims made by Canadian Prime Minister of potential links between Indian government agencies and the death of Nijar. While these developments, they have raised several eyebrows, but it has also led to creation of several diplomatic tensions. So, hello everyone, my name is Shweta and today we are going to discuss about the diplomatic tensions that have emerged because of the resurgence of the Khalistan issue and how India is grappling with such international rift. So, in this video, the points of discussion would revolve around First, we will try to understand what is the current issue that has led to resurgence of this issue. Then, who are the people that are targeted in the recent wave related to the Khalistan movement? We will try to understand the basics and the demands related to the Khalistan movement itself. We will look at the originating factors or the reasons of its sustenance in present times as well. We will look at the major events through the help of a timeline this movement has passed through. Then we look at the role of Sikh diaspora in this movement, implications of this particular issue on India's interest and how Indian government can seek to allay this issue. So, we will start this video with discussion on the current issue. See, Nikhil Gupta, he is an Indian man who has been arrested by US authorities for trying to kill or having a plot to kill Gurpatwant Singh Pannu in United States. United States has expressed grave concern over these allegations and it has showed its seriousness in talks with its Indian authorities. This case parallels another killing of Hardeep Singh Nijar, who was a Canadian citizen. After death of Hardeep Singh Nijar, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau he alleged that Indian government is involved with the killing of Hardeep Singh Nijar. While the story behind all these killings we will look at in a while, we will first try to identify the people who have been the targets of this recent resurgence. First is Gurpatwant Singh Pannu. He is a legal advisor and spokesperson of an organization named as Six for Justice. It is a it's a separatist group which was founded by Gurpantavant Singh Pannu himself post-1984 anti-Sikh riots in India. This particular group has been banned in India in 2019 and Gurpantavant Singh Pannu himself has been declared as a terrorist by Indian organizations. Apart from him, Hardeep Singh Nijar, he was a Canadian citizen who was shot down three years after India designated him as a terrorist. He initially had links with Babbar Khalsa International, which is also declared as a terrorist organization by many countries such as United States, such as India and Canada itself. Apart from these two, which have been recently very controversial, there have been several killings which involve major Khalistani activists across the world. To name some of them, will take Paramjit Singh Panjwar. He was allegedly hand, uh, heading the Khalistani Commando Force, a Sikh liberation organization actively operating around the regions of Punjab. He was shot down by two identi unidentified men in Pakistan. Then Avtar Singh Khanda, he was the head of Khalistan Liberation Force. He, was, he had died in United Kingdom under mysterious circumstances, but some even attribute his death to poisoning. Now, all these recent killings, one major thread that links all these deaths is the Khalistan movement. So, to know more about their deaths, we should also try to understand what is the Khalistan movement in itself. The Khalistan movement, it is a separatist movement which seeks creation of a separate Sikh homeland in the northwestern region of India. So, it advocates for a ethno-religious sovereign state around the regions of Punjab in India. The proposed state boundaries 
they are varied across different groups some claim that the entirety of punjab state which has a sikh majority it should be part of khalistan some other want to include the punjabi speaking population or the dominant areas where such population is existing from the joining areas of haryana and himachal pradesh also larger claims have also been made to include the pakistani punjab as well so the all this land would be named as khalistan khalistan literally it means the land of the pure this has been derived from the word khalsa which is a arabic term which means pure so khalistani movement it has a demand for creating a separate sikh homeland around the regions of punjab how this movement has originated what has been its reasons we'll now look at it the notion of khalsa sikhism a faith which originated around 15th century when north india was under mughal rule it has this notion of khalsa embedded in it when guru gobind singh ji he took up as the leader of sikhism in 1699 particularly he recasted this faith on the lines of khalsa he incorporated a political vision to protect sikhs from their religious persecution and to establish a separate sikh homeland for them so religious calls for having autonomy over rule on the own self it was made calls under the religion of sikhism apart from it the british colonial policies during the late 1800s or the early 1900s they were trying to divide between sikhs and hindus during that time britishers recruited large number of sikhs in british army to put them against the hindu rulers who were trying to rebel against the british rule so due to the divisive politics of divide and rule that was followed by britishers there was a rift that created between sikhs and hindus as the roots of khalistan can be traced back to such issues the origin it should be traced to india's independence movement in 1947 and the subsequent partition it followed in 1947 punjab province it was bifurcated into two countries some part of it went to pakistan and another one stayed with india now during that time the punjabi people they faced a lot of social and economic upheaval during that time the sikh population it felt marginalized in the new social and political environment in india so during that time the demands of separate punjabi subha or a separate punjabi speaking state it was gaining grounds because of that in 1966 the punjab it was reorganized to deal with the demands of separate punjabi speaking place so the punjab reorganization act it was passed in 1966 while it provided for separate district for punjabi speaking population some other areas which were dominated by punjabi speaking people they were also merged with the newly formed states of haryana and himachal pradesh as well so it created implications for punjabi speaking people apart from it the joint sharing of chandigarh as a capital between haryana and punjab it was not liked by the sikh people the punjab population it also viewed the river sharing agreements between haryana and punjab as detrimental for the punjabi farmers so because of all these concerns such demands of sikh separate separate sikh state it was also generated and during that time the sikh religious leaders they also created a narrative that sikh interest can only be protected in a separate sikh state called khalistan so all these reasons they can be associated with the growth of khalistan movement in india we'll look at how punjab has been divided over the period of time so initially before independence this was the historic punjab in 1947 when two countries were created pakistan and india so this part of punjab went to pakistan when india had all this part of punjab the punjab reorganization act in 1966 it led to creation of this state punjab in its 
own self. So now because this problem it was created and um, apart from it the migration crisis has followed right the social economic upheaval has taken place so the psychological impact in the minds of Punjabi people it was always there now because of that the demands of Khalistan it has resurfaced many times during 1970s to 1980s but what are the major events that it has passed through we'll take a look at it in 1973, Anandpur Sahib resolution was passed. Akali Dal, a major political force in the Punjabi popular politics during that time, it brought forward this list of demands for having more rights in Punjab. So, Anandpur Sahib resolution, it demanded, among many other things, more autonomy for the state of Punjab. It identified the regions that would be included in a separate Punjab state and also sought a right to frame its own internal constitution. It also touched upon various other issues related to water sharing, related to distinct identity of six. But as government failed to implement these issues in its policies, the discontent between Punjabi speaking population, it further grew. During that time, violent movements could be seen across Punjab. And during that time, a major actor in the Khalistan movement in Punjab, he took on the political sphere. Jarnail Singh Hindrawale. He emerged in Punjab during that time. By 1980s, he has positioned himself as the authentic voice of Sikhs and started posing problem for the government itself. In 1982, he launched a civil disobedience movement by the name of Dharma Yudh Morcha. During this movement, he resided in Golden Temple and directed demonstrations and violent clashes with the police from there. As religious polarization grew and sectorial violence can be seen during at that time, the Indira Gandhi government, it saw this movement as tantamount to secession. So now when India's internal security was a threat, Indian army, it launched a massive operation under the code name of Operation Blue Star. Now, what was this Operation Blue Star? It started in June 1984 when Indian forces it stormed the Golden Temple, sixth holiest site, and in a bid to flush out all the militants who had taken refuge in the Golden Temple. After that, Bindravali he was killed, and Golden Temple was freed of militants. But that has left the six across the world gravely wounded and further galvanized demand of Khalistan. In the aftermath of Operation Blue Star, few, year, few months later, the then Prime Minister of India, Indira Gandhi, she was assassinated by two of her Sikh bodyguards at her residence. They triggered a massive wave of communal violence where over 8,000 Sikhs were massacred. And a year later, the movement took an international dimension when an Air India flight, which was en route from Canada to New Delhi, it faced a bomb explosion and all the 329 people who were on board, they were killed. Later investigations revealed that it was an act made by the Sikh nationalist groups operating from Canada. So in a bid, later in a bid to end militancy in Punjab, the Indian security forces and the Punjab police, it actively cracked down on the militant issues that were created in Punjab. By 1990s, the Khalistan movement, it had petered down to a great extent in Punjab, but it has remained active in a few pockets of Sikh diaspora across different regions. Now, we understand how the Sikh diaspora is spread across the world with the help of this map. The Sikh diaspora, it means that the Sikh population who have gone to different countries and settled there. So, the major areas where Sikhs are in dominate, they are Canada, United States, Europe, even Australia. The current Indian government, it has intensified its pursuit against the Sikh nationalist and it has time and again advised these countries to take legal actions against the Sikh separatist group. 
India has particularly taken up this issue again and again with Canada as six form around 2% of the total Canadian population. But many a times the relations between India and the Sikh countries, Sikh dominant countries, they have been hampered because of the calls of Khalistan movement. So in such a scenario, the Sikh diaspora, it has actively provided for support to the Khalistan movement through fundraising, through political support, through advocacy on the international platform and etc. So this issue, it remains to be having adverse impact on India's and in that light, we'll look at the major implications of this Khalistan issue. So first we look at the strained diplomatic ties. The allegations and the counter allegations that take place between different nations, it hampers the trust and confidence that the nations have between each of them. It also hampers the bilateral and international relations as the nations, they fail to align their objectives and work towards a similar objective. Apart from it, the security implications are there. As the Khalistan movement has resurgent, it has sparked fears of violence in Punjab. It can also lead to spread of militancy or youth radicalization or even terrorism in India as well. India has also concerns relating to the vandalism which has been shown by Sikh separatists or their supporters at Indian missions in various countries including Canada, including Australia as well. Apart from this, the impact on trade and economy can also be seen. In such a situation of heightened political tensions, the business partnerships and the investment flows, they also get hampered. Businesses, they reassess their decision in the view of such heightened tensions. For example, the recently, the trade talks between India and Canada, they have also been paused. Apart from this, cooperation on critical global challenges such as climate change, such as counter-terrorism or internal or international security as well, it gets hampered. The nations, they find it difficult to work towards a common objective in, in the view of such issues. And then the people-to-people -people impact can also be seen. It hampers the travel which can take place between different countries. It hampers the interaction between the citizens as well. Apart from it, the political ramifications. Internally, the religious polarization could be seen in India and it can also influence the electoral dynamics as well. Politically, we can say the global image of India, it can have a setback because of such issue. The soft power that India leverages to a great extent, it can also get hampered because of this particular issue. So we have seen that this issue, it has wider implications as can be thought. So in the light of such grave implications it can have, we should also try to discuss the way forward which India can have to solve this issue. So India should invest in socio-economic development in Punjab. The concerns of Punjab population are inclusive of unemployment, agrarian distress or even the water related problems. So Indian government, it should try to allay those concerns and win the support from Punjab population itself. Apart from it, continued efforts to clamp down on Khalistani militants should be taken up by Indian authorities. When a small ignition, it can light up a big fire in India. In such a scenario, India should take help of, you know, countering propaganda on social media. It can take community outreach programs as well to tackle such Khalistani elements on its soil. Ensure justice for victims and survivors affected by Khalistan related violence. India should continue its investigation into the excesses made during the 1984 anti-Sikh riots. India should provide monetary assistance and other kind of support to the victims or the families of victims, those who have been affected by the violence because of the Khalistan movement. Apart from it, coordination with foreign governments and intelligence agencies. India should try to support the investigation and prosecution of Khalistani leaders who are operating in different countries and might aid 
the financial and military operations in India as well. Apart from it, engaging in constructive and respectful dialogue should also be a way. India, India should try to address the underlying demands related to the Khalistan issue. India should try to understand the other's perspective as well and try to reach at a common ground. So, in this issue, we have discussed how the problem of Khalistan, it has led to diplomatic tensions between India and other countries where Sikh dominant population is there. What goes more on this issue is still to be seen, but that's all that we have to discuss today. That's all for today. Thank you.